What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today is a bit of a different video today. I'm going to be doing the TikTok art styles challenge. Now I know this challenge is kind of long and overdue but I'm finally doing it. But to those of you who don't know what the TikTok art styles challenge is, it's basically you're taking any drawing, possibly a self portrait or whatever, you're splitting it into either two pieces or four pieces and doing each section with a different illustration style. Now this challenge is utilized by a lot of TikTok artists including myself and I see challenges like this a lot when I'm browsing through TikTok. I'm just scrolling through TikTok and I see, hey, part one is this section, part two is going to be this section and that's going to be a whole different video. But I know some of you guys watching this video may have seen the same thing because it's been popularized through TikTok. But today, I'm going to be doing that challenge. But instead of using a licensed character, I'm going to be using one of my OCs. And for this challenge, I will be utilizing a new supply, which are paint pens. Now, these paint pens are really new to you guys because I've had these paint pens for a while now. I think I had like the 24 set or something. But the reason these paint pens are new to you guys is because I never really made a lot of videos spotlighting my paint pens. Maybe the white one only when it comes to adding highlights to a certain part of my drawing. I've done that maybe a couple times, but definitely not a lot of times. But when it comes to different colored paint pens, that's where the new part comes in. So a big portion of this video will incorporate the use of paint pens. And in addition to that, there will be a few paint pen tutorials following this video. So just keep your notifications on so that way you'll know when videos like that go public. But I think that's all I have to say for now. Let's go. Okay, so for this challenge to work, I'm gonna make a symmetrical drawing of my original character at a front view. So I'm gonna capture the face, the neck, and a small portion of the body. And then I'm going to take a sharpie and divide it into four parts. Okay, so for quadrant number one, it incorporates most of the illustration techniques that I'm used to using. That includes using my Copic markers to blend, and in any case, I may have to use some colored pencil to enhance the blending if I want. But the main portion of that would be my Copic markers or alcohol based markers in general. So I'm going to be real honest with you, there's not much to talk about when it comes to this quadrant. But I will say if you are interested in learning how to blend with Copic markers the way I did for this quadrant, I got one playlist with the title of coloring and illustration strategies and another playlist with Copic marker tutorials. So that way you get a glimpse into color theory, you know what contrast is, how to get to a result that utilizes contrast and stuff like that. So a link to those playlists will be up there in the card and there will also be links in the description down below. Okay, now for the next quadrant, I had to really step out of my comfort zone. So instead of using my normal colors for my original character, I ended up using the opposite colors because this section is the inverted color challenge. So that means no black ink to outline, no skin colors, and no using a white to add highlights. I don't know if you saw this already, but I ended up outlining everything in a black pen first. So that way later on while I'm drawing, I can just use a white paint pen and go over top of that. So that way the line work will be black when I finish this section. And when I was blending with my markers, I also had to consider where the shades were gonna go. Also in terms of blending with my Copic markers, I usually add shading close to the contour lines and usually go from light to dark. But instead I had to keep those areas light and do the middle parts dark, which is something I don't often do. So in a way it's kind of doing things backwards. But just to reiterate, each part of this section that's supposed to be black has to be white. But the only thing that really got me was that the majority of this section is blue. But that's because when you think about it, the skin color itself is a shade of orange because brown is a shade of orange. And red itself is a color that's literally next to orange on the color wheel. So I kind of should have expected that when it comes to this section because blue and aquamarine or turquoise, some might say, are close to the color wheel as well. So they kind of complement each other. So those are the exact colors that I'm going for. But I will say later on in the video, I'm gonna invert this section and this section only to see if I get the colors right. Cause I didn't want to do it when I finished the drawing because I wanted it to be kind of a surprise to me to see if I match the colors 
exactly. So just stick around to the end of the video to see if I got everything right. For quadrant number three, it incorporates using the glitch effect. Now this is another one of those art challenges that incorporates the use of Posca pens. And I think this is by far one of the easiest ones that I did for this drawing. The reason I say that is because I'm not coloring in a specific area. Because when I'm doing the glitch effects, I'm forced to leave it white and white only. Because I'm not going to color everything with the line work itself being the one getting the glitch effect. Because how would a color drawing be glitched? using traditional supplies or at least I'm not familiar with how that would look and I'm not seeing it in my head. So I'd say the reason it's easy is because you're really messing around with the line work. I mean the only problem that I had while doing this section was layering because after I applied the glitch lines with the red and the blue paint pen I also had to go over everything with the white to kind of break those pieces of line work apart and sometimes if you're familiar with Posca pens or paint pens in general when you lay it down the first time, it's kind of transparent. Or maybe when you're doing this challenge, sometimes the white paint pen kind of mixes in with either the red, the blue, or the black and starts to smudge. So that way when you put it to the paper, it's not exactly white. But that was the only problem I had. Everything else worked out nicely, but it could have been because I didn't wait for the line work to dry because it's paint. It's not like markers where it dries super fast so I gotta like realize. But then again, paint pens are not something that I always use because unlike markers, they take a little longer to dry. But since we're still talking about paint, it's also okay to go over in a few different layers so that way you can get an opaque solid white. And when you think about it, it's not really hard to do. But yeah, the glitch effect is super easy to do because again, you're playing with the line work. But I do have a video in the making talking about how to do the glitch effect start to finish. So remember to have notifications on so you know when that video drops. Okay, now for the fourth and final quadrant, I decided to do like a drip effect. So when I did this quadrant, I kind of imagined the face of my character as a popsicle. Y'all remember going to the ice cream truck and getting like a SpongeBob popsicle? Because I also thought about that when I did this quadrant. Because popsicles melt, and when they melt, they drip. So that's where the idea pretty much came from, is uh, my character's face as a popsicle melting. And since this is the fourth quadrant, I was really into the challenge. So I didn't want to like go back to using Copic markers for that quadrant. I instead wanted to use the paint pens to really get a feel of how they work. Or at least get more use out of the other colors that I haven't used yet that's in my collection. Because I've never really used paint pens for a full color illustration. Instead, I've been using paint pens to apply lighting effects to a certain part of my drawings. But before doing this challenge, that's all I knew how to do with paint pens. So I wanted to try doing a portion of my illustration as kind of practice when it comes to using paint pens for an illustration. Because I might just consider doing a video like that someday. But if you want me to do that, let me know down in the comments. But I really do like how this section came out because I kind of made it look somewhat nostalgic. And the reason I say nostalgic is because I have like these little small circles and even smaller ones as well. And I put that on there to indicate that there's some light source or maybe a heat source beaming down on this popsicle to make it melt. But after adding those circles, the outcome of the drawing made it look like an old soda pop ad. And that's something I actually like looking at because I feel as though this was an ad that's before my time. And after I'm finished with this, I'm like, wow, this is my first paint pen illustration and I get a nostalgic result. That's amazing. But in terms of having the liquid drops, I have a portion of the drawing, like right there where the face is, I have those drops facing down. But then the rest of the drawing shows the neck and shoulders, and the way I drew it is kind of like at an incline. So the drippy parts of that section will also be at an incline. I mean, when you think about it, it's kind of sort of okay to have the drops going down along with the other ones. 
but I feel it's only making sense doing it this way. But yeah, that's all I have to say about that. But yeah, there's the finished drawing and I'm really, really proud of how the results came out. Because when you think about it, it's kind of a step away from my usual illustration techniques. And as I go along with the drawing, I'm slowly drifting away from my illustration techniques that I'm used to using. And then I'm gravitating towards using a different media, but still traditional art. Because you got my normal illustration technique right here, then the next challenge would be still using the same illustration supplies, but using a completely different set of colors. The third section would be kind of like a beginner's course when it comes to using a different media, paint. But while I'm in this section, I'm finding an easy way to use it. But when you think about it, it's kind of an introduction to the next section where I'm using the same medium from this section, but a lot of different colors for this section and kind of bringing the illustration to an end, which I have to agree, it was a lot of fun. But now we're close to the end of the video where we gotta take the inverted section and see if I match the colors right. And keep in mind, I'm seeing this for the first time. So let me get this website up right quick. Okay, here's the inverted section. I right, click invert. Mm. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Okay, the colors are really close, very close. But the only thing I see was the white part of the eye. I forgot to color that in black. That's the only flaw, but everything else matches perfectly. Wow, I guess I can do the inverted color challenge. I just didn't know I could do that. Shoot, the colors are almost perfect. Like, wow, I still can't believe it. But enough of me talking, let me know what you guys thought of this challenge. Do you want me to do the same thing with a different character? Do you want me to do something completely different? Did you like the video? If you did, give it a like and a comment and subscribe to my channel for more videos every week. And I'll see you in my next video. I